Hello? Oh, hey, welcome to the channel. Today we are gonna continue addressing the health of this Mercruiser 496, uh, including dealing with some corrosion issues in the oil pan. We're gonna also look at the exhaust manifolds and inspect the internals of those, make sure they're okay. And we're also going to do a little bit of soda blasting and painting. There was several areas that were rusty and they are basically cosmetic issues, but I wanted to address them and get rid of that rust and corrosion and just make the motor look overall nicer. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Back in 2017, I began a full restoration of my 96 Bayliner by tearing it apart all the way down to the hull. From there, I began the rebuilding process, which included learning to fiberglass, rebuilding an engine and outdrive, learning to fair and paint, and even upholstery. Now, I've bought a 28-foot cabin cruiser, and I'm starting all over. Welcome, my name's Jared. Now get ready, because it's going to be a ship show. All right, boat people, what is going on? When I got this motor out of the boat, one of the first things I noticed was how corroded the oil pan was. It looked pretty rough, and to be honest with you, I was a little bit nervous that it was not going to be usable. My plan of attack was to basically try and clean it up and see what I was dealing with before I made any rash decisions of if I needed to buy a new one. My lips almost knocked over a can of spray paint. I started thinking about how I wanted to go about cleaning it, and there's a lot of sort of crevices and stuff like that because it's a cast aluminum pan. All of the paint was flaking off, and there was this really white powdery corrosion underneath. So I started thinking about how I wanted to clean it up, and Sort of the best option that came to mind was like sandblasting. Sandblasting is a little bit aggressive and the big downside of that is unless you completely take the part off of the motor and you're able to thoroughly clean it and just absolutely guarantee you get everything out of it, it's really not a good option because you might be left with sand in whatever the part is that you sandblast. So obviously in an oil pan, that's no good. So I started to think about other options and what I came up with was soda blasting never done it before. I researched it a little bit and it looked like a good option. It's minimally aggressive. It's good for aluminum softer metals and the big benefit is it's water soluble. So as soon as you hit it with a water hose it's going to dissolve and go away. So I actually went out to Harbor Freight. I know, take it easy. I went out to Harbor Freight and bought their pressure pot sandblaster. They have a couple different options. This one seemed like the best sort of middle of the road, but still entry level option. I bought a 50 pound bag of baking soda and decided to go after the oil pan and see how it went. So the soda blasting actually went surprisingly well. Um, it worked very well in removing that white powdery residue. There was a little bit of some stuff left, but I think the oil pan's actually anodized, so that's why it has that kind of dark appearance. But regardless, after I got it sandblasted, just to be on the safe side, I wanted to go through and sand it a little bit. I just wanted to make sure I had a good mechanical bond for the paint as well. Okay, now the oil pan is sanded and cleaned up and ready for paint essentially, but before we do that, the next step I wanted to take was to completely clean the engine. So basically cover it in degreaser and hose it down. I actually did it two times. So I am going to use this pump sprayer to pump on some industrial degreaser. The motor's not super greasy, but I just want something that's going to work pretty well without a whole lot of mechanical agitation. So. So before I do that, I want to show you guys what I did here to protect everything. So a lot of the stuff is removed, but I did go around in all of the electrical connectors. I put a piece of tape over and then a Ziploc bag and a zip tie. So kind of tried to protect things as much as I could here. Now certain things I couldn't get other stuff over, but um, I'm going to go through afterwards and give this a good blow off with the leaf blower and then some compressed air to try and get as much water out of everything as I can and just let everything have a good amount of time to just dry off as much as possible so I think we'll be okay here I'm not using a pressure washer so just a regular hose so should be good here we go
at that point, we basically sprayed down the motor, kind of rinsed and repeat two times. And then at that point, just kind of had to go through with the air compressor and the air gun and sort of just blow all the water off everything and give it a good, good amount of time to dry out completely. And at that point, we're ready for paint. And speaking of paint, let me show you what I used, if I still even have it. Yep, there it is. So I actually use this. Um, it's kind of a, a second best primer for aluminum. So really the, the gold standard for priming aluminum is zinc chromate. It gives you a really good chemical bond from the primer to the aluminum. And it's really the only thing you can use that's gonna guarantee the paint's gonna stick. The second best in line of kind of preference is zinc phosphate, which is what that is. Zinc chromate is like almost impossible to get anymore. It's horrible for your health. So it's like pretty much banned most places. So zinc phosphate is more readily available and a good option in all honesty, as long as the prep is good, but that's, that's true of all paint jobs. So once the oil pan was sanded down well, um, basically cleaned it up real well, and then decided to go on with the zinc phosphate primer. It looks ridiculous because it's yellow. I guess if anything, it gives you a good idea when you have coverage, both of the primer and the top coat. I got the zinc phosphate primer on there, a few coats, started off with a nice light coat, got a little bit heavier with each one. I think I did three coats total and let that dry for 24 hours. And then the next day started applying my gloss black engine enamel paint, just re regular Rust-Oleum. I've used it in the past and have really good luck with it. So stuck with that. So at this point, you're probably saying, all right, let me see, let me see, what's it look like? So here we go. Now it's not perfect. The aluminum oil pan did have some corrosion and some pitting in certain areas, not deep enough that I was concerned with it. This is probably one of the worst spots here. But overall, really happy with how the, the paint turned out. I did have some other areas of corrosion that I addressed with the soda blaster while I was at it, uh, namely back in this area under the bell housing, which I've removed. Sorry, black. Black paint is not easy to film. Everything just is dark. But it had quite a bit of rust in this area. So I took care of that while I was at it. Um, also, a couple of random rust spots on the underside here on the block, which I addressed at the same time. And one other area that was really bad was actually these main pulleys on the crankshaft. Um, again, hard to see here with filming gloss black, but these were very, very rusty. But fortunately cleaned up really well with the soda blasting. So. Got those painted up and looking good. Um, in addition to that, kind of removed some of these brackets and pulleys while I was at it to clean them up. So I would say up to exhaust manifold level, I'm basically done with paint and everything's looking good. That being said, the next project is going to be removing these exhaust manifolds so we can give them a good inspection. And the undersides of these are uh, kind of corroded. They have rust. Both sides look like this. So I'm going to take these off, test them, and soda blast these and paint them up as well. So let's get to it.
All right, we got the manifold up on the bench here and there is just getting to be way too much stuff on here. So I need to get these things figured out so I can get them back off the bench and kind of free up some space. We got the first one sitting up here. I have it sort of leveled out. And what I did, let me grab the camera here and show you. Okay, so the piece that was in here, which is one of these, is basically a check valve assembly for the drain in, or the uh, air drain system. So I removed that and discovered that it's a three quarter inch NPT port. So I don't actually have just a regular three quarter inch plug. So instead of buying something, I did have a garden hose adapter that was three quarter inch and then just have a garden hose thread cap on here. So that seems to be working great and just threw a wrench under here to help kind of level it out. So what we're doing is I've already done this one so I can show you. Since that bottom port is blocked off, what I did is actually put a funnel in here and filled the coolant passage with acetone. So there's a couple of different ways you can pressure test manifolds. One is you actually have to make block off plates that cover up all of the ports. Then you would fill the actual exhaust ports with water and then inject air into the cooling passages and look for bubbles in the exhaust port so that would tell you if you have a leak from one to the other. Uh, that's pretty involved, especially making block off plates. Um, I didn't really want to go down that route and I think this is a pretty pretty trusted method so using acetone here what that does is the viscosity of acetone is way lower than water and its surface tension is way lower as well so even with minuscule cracks in here you'll actually see it leak through so what we're really doing is for one, checking to see if the level drops. And then we're gonna give the ports an inspection as best as we can, going through just kind of visually seeing what we can see. And then I actually have a boroscope that I'll use to try and inspect down on the ports a little bit more. So let's try that out. So at this point, I'm basically just using the boroscope as an actual flashlight to see with my actual eyes, whatever I can see. And then we'll actually use it down in the ports. So far, so good. Okay, kind of seeing what I can see. So let's start going down these ports. So this is the far right one. Okay, from what I can see, that one looks okay. We'll try and come in from the other side then. Yep. <laughs> that was funny. There's a big bubble trapped. It just popped out of there. <clears throat> okay. Everything looks good coming in from that side. This one's kind of a sharp turn. Let me try bending the end of the scope a little bit. There we go. Seems good so far. Last port. As far as I can go that way, seems okay. And from what I can tell, looks good. Same thing there. Same thing there. Last one. Oop, gasket's a little mangled in the way. There we go. Okay. I don't see any signs. So, I mean... What I would expect to see is sort of a, a dark spot where this carbon kind of saturated with the acetone and I'm not seeing that anywhere. I did stick the boroscope down in the cooling jacket areas, kind of wiggled it around a little bit and actually the, the corrosion there looked very minimal, which is good. So I wasn't expecting to see any issues, but this is a good sort of sanity check. I'd hate to throw these back on the boat and find out that there is a leak and exhaust manifolds and risers are like the number one engine killer. So good to check this they do look surprisingly good so I think they can go back on the boat once we get the new gaskets
just in case it happens again. This went hilariously bad last time, so figured I'd record it for your own entertainment. Not as bad. I learned this time that you gotta lift the funnel up a little bit to let the air in there, because last time it just overflowed and went everywhere. All right guys, well that is gonna wrap it up for this one. It's getting to be about long enough for one video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to those that have liked these videos and subscribed. And to those of you that aren't, please consider doing so. I mean, it helps get these videos out to other people and kind of motivates me to keep making these videos, because. It takes a lot of extra time to do this part than actually just working on the motor, but I do enjoy it. So thanks again for watching. In the next episode, we're going to continue diving into the health of this Mercruiser motor. We're going to touch on the cool fuel module, which the keen eyed viewers out there may have noticed. I have two of those sitting on my bench right now. And on this bench back here, I just received all of the gaskets required to take apart the heat exchanger and clean that out. So we're going to do that on the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye.